Okay, we were back. And our next guest I told you a little about in my opening, yeah, the strange one. Sufi Jarja is up next. Do I start talking now? <laughs> Hold your horses Sufi George, because folks, I want to make a point here about Sufi George before he comes on. I've got your point right here. <laughs> you see what I mean? But here's the point I want to make. Sufi George thinks. He's. Funny. <laughs> Here he is back for another round of serious mind bending, Sufi George. Okay you can say something now. Good evening David. <laughs> Sufi George, glad to have you on the show again. Now. I understand that you've discovered how the aliens get here, how they travel. Not that there really are any aliens, wink wink. But if there are, and that's what you're saying, right? If there are aliens here, then you sort of figured out how they managed to get here. Wait. Wait. Listen to this. If there really are no aliens, then you've discovered a portal that leads to nowhere, and that could be really big hit, you know? Where did Rodney go? Why he's nowhere, honey? Nowhere at all. He got too close to our new portal in the basement. Yes, not that there really are any aliens here, but here's how they got here. So, ah, uh, that's sort of what I just said. Yes, it is certainly just so. Well, let's get down to it. I want to hear all about this portal between us and them. Okay. We think that aliens have to travel an impossible number of light years to get here, and therefore we are skeptical. We don't see how it can be done. The distances are simply too great. Now, you're talking about how reasonable people think about it, right? Right. But there is an enormous fatal flaw in this reasoning, because it overlooks an essential fact, since all of our experience of material reality comes to us in the form of frequency waves, Space itself is included. Space is no more out there than the things we see. All of it has reality only when it is resonating with awareness, and that doesn't happen out there, it happens only in our consciousness system. Now this is some of the same BS you left us with last time. Reality only exists in our consciousness and the universe is made of frequency waves. I've given that a lot of thought, you know, and I've laughed a lot. But there are some people who can make sense out of it, and you know where they get, locked up. But you are a free man, Sufi George, and you are here to make sense out of it all. David, the universe is an invisible, non-material network cluster of frequency wave patterns. It requires no space because it is non-material. And there is no space anyway because space is our interpretation of frequency waves. That's sort of what I just said, but go ahead. We've discovered a lot about the frequency wave bands in our material reality. We have a rough idea of their wavelength limits. Just think, just a few hundred years ago, people had no idea at all about frequency waves. Today frequency waves are common knowledge, and we use them every day in hundreds of ways, the web cell phones, and so on. I'm sure you have a cell phone, right? Trying to change the subject there, Sufi George. We know our material reality is made of frequency waves. Things in our reality are made of a cluster of frequency waves, a wave field. A wave field has a perimeter that contains all of the wave patterns required to produce a kitchen chair, for example. Well, everybody knows that. Rupert Murdoch called these patterns morphic fields. Patterns are wave fields, ready to be tuned into by awareness and witness to experience. Now let me get this straight, Sufi George. We can tune into wave fields and then we get the reality that they create. So if I tune into, say, Sissy Spacek, when she was 12, is that what I get? <laughs> It is certainly true that frequency wave patterns are ready to manifest as experience as soon as resonance with awareness is established. Did he answer my question? 
Well anyway, how about let's get back to the aliens. Right. The aliens want to enter our material reality. So what do they do? They create something like a tuner that will tune into the wave bands of our material reality. A simple technological feat. <laughs> then maybe they scan these wave bands into their memories. Another modest feat. And then maybe by focusing their attention on our wave bands, they simply appear in our reality because they are tuned into our frequency waves and that is our material reality. And they could come and go by changing what they pay attention to. But doesn't this skip over the whole UFO thing? I mean, what about their spaceships? Their ships are made of the frequency waves of their alien material reality. Usually, we can't see their ships because we don't tune into their wave bands. But sometimes, they will retune their ship to adapt to our material reality, and then we can see them in the sky and go check out where they have crashed. The ships themselves give structure to the attention shifting process. They are a vehicle to organize and contain the effort. A ship can be directed to a destination, whereas one alien focusing on our wave bands might emerge into our material reality, at random, like in the movies, wondering where in the hell he is. Sufi George, that's all the time we have but I hope you'll come back soon. Just remember. My Sufi George books are on Amazon.com. <laughs>